Hi, everybody. So this is the official greeting of our chat. So what I'm going to do is ask, I'm going to just go ahead and go around my screen around so you guys can introduce yourself. So when people watch this, it goes accordingly. So Mia, do you want to introduce yourself first? Um, sure. My name is Mia Fabrizio. I'm a 2020 MFA recipient from the School Museum of Fine Arts at Tufts. I've been living in Boston for two years and native to the Philadelphia area. Um, prior to that, I've spent about like a dozen years teaching art in and out of classrooms. And um, yeah, and my work addresses topics at the intersection of like sociology, um, architecture, and visual arts. Cool. Neetu, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I am Neetu Singhal. I am from Mass Art. I'm still doing my uh, degree course because I, I'm going to like graduate till December. And uh, recently, um, my project is uh, based on the line and dots and how the science and uh, the especially biology neuroscience is going to attach with the color. So this is my project is all about uh, the investigation further uh, with the uh, artwork. And uh, uh, like, I just want to explain a little bit more about that. So uh, in this uh, work, sorry, I'm taking a little bit more time. So okay. in this, yeah, so uh, in my work, I'm just uh, going to explore. I'd, I would love to discuss you all guys about the work uh, definitely in the deep about the consciousness. If you have uh, any interest to discuss this topic about the human consciousness is how is going to relate with the work and color. So, I mean, you are welcome to have a little discussion on this topic. Thank Great. you. Thanks. Mariah, do you want to go next? Um, yeah. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Mariah Faith. I graduated from Leslie uh, BFA in Fine Arts. My thesis project was a lot about uh, my experiences growing up with a chronic illness. I started painting when I was diagnosed with a painful chronic illness at 13. So ever since then, painting has kind of become like my escape from isolation and a lot of those feelings that I had to deal with growing up. And my thesis project has a lot to do with that. And so I think it was even more um, relevant now that we're all in this age of social isolation. So it, the work was finished in a time of social isolation and, and now it's coming out into the world that way. So I think that's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's weird. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, do you want to go next, Carly? Sure. Hi, I'm Carly. Um, I also am an MFA recipient um, 2020 from the museum school with Mia. And my work, I'm originally from Southern California and I've been in Boston for just over two years also. Um, I have a long history, history in like painting and portraiture and figurative art. And my work um, investigates topics of like it's heavily psychological based, um, memory, um, a lot of philosophical ideas, um, dealing with like physical, mental physical connections that c come as a result of trauma and illness. Um, yeah. Cool. And then last but not least, Julian. Uh, hi, my name is Julian Parikh. Um, I just received my MFA um, in graphic design from Boston University. Um, I'm from the Boston area. I lived in Boston for about like eight or nine years now, so a while. Um, my work, it's like currently it fo focusing on exploring narrative storytelling and um, how queer forms of experimentation can help better communicate ideas and content. Awesome. Cool. Thanks, everybody. Um, so one of the first things that I wanted to sort of pose as a topic is sort of one of I think the most obvious things of like how has your studio practice changed because of COVID-19 where um, I'm sure every school is a little bit different, but there was sort of this quick shift from you all have a studio space to like get out. <laughs> so does anybody have any examples or um, uh, ideas of how it changed your work or influenced how you thought about making our work? Um, well, just my work personally is 
was very large scale when I was in school and, and that's really the work that I saw myself making and then this whole thing happened so I was able to complete the two big paintings one of them's behind me <laughs> that I had started in school but ever since that everything became much much smaller I have yeah. a lot of series of tiny little heads now <laughs> and I definitely think scale is a big thing that's changed because of the pandemic. Yeah, sort of like out of necessity, it had to change because you physically only have X amount of space. Um, what about, I know some of you work in installation or sculpture, so that's also a really big shift between like having access to all these studio spaces and then and then just like not. Um, like Mia, I know you were had some installation work in your thesis show. Yeah, I totally had a um, similar experience and I sympathize with the pains of scale. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I did go from having um, a tremendous access to facility to then just really cutting wood with a utility knife and using leftover scraps that, you know, had been bagged up from previous projects. So um, I too was working and talking about home and architecture and construction materials. And it ended up getting down to the nitty gritty of these, what was flaked off of um, with routers, what was hand chiseled out and using those to collage and then ended up making um, smaller, smaller, like almost scale models. Um, of something that I would have made much larger. Do you think it made you think differently than you wouldn't like would have normally because you're sort of forced into it? You know what I mean? Like it's a different set of parameters, so now you have to um, adapt. I think um, not so much differently, but more in depth in the same line of thinking that I was um, employing prior. Um, the work really called on a lot of. DIY and homemade and you know how would your grandpa kind of make things yeah. and I think this even forced the issue a little bit further and using um, true hand tools and and thinking about um, maybe something like you know holes and dowels holding things together as and not so much hardware or more modern yeah. you know, hand technology so so yeah definitely yeah wow Anybody else had their COVID-19 affect their studio process or their thesis output? Yeah, my thesis, um, I do a lot of painting, but I also do like a, a little bit of sculptural stuff. And I was creating an installation using paintings and using sculptural aspects and using all sorts of different things. And it was going to be very big. And so I was like creating walls out of paintings and like using a lot of lights. And so, yeah, I, without having the access to even the big paintings I left and the the saws and the all of the materials to make the things um yeah everything had to change and and kind of i ended up basically building it in photoshop <laughs> um and then now the ideas are totally different because a lot of the work that i've made since then has been smaller i made like a studio um in my living room and i was painting like pretty small paintings next to my window with like a fan blowing out because you don't really want to oil paint like <laughs> too much and so yeah now i'm thinking differently about um what that project will look like in person when it's when it actually comes together physically wow no i can't i think about it all the time about sort of you're dealt a really difficult hand of this is your last semester this is all the projects you've been thinking and working on then all of a sudden not only it's just the stress of the world but the stress of your own smaller world of making things like uh like julian your practice as a graphic designer is largely digital but still you were sort of i don't know dealt a different set of parameters to work within i'm sure yeah um what's actually interesting about my program is um because we're all graphic designers if uh, a lot of us if we hadn't done art in undergrad a lot of us, it was going to be our first exhibition, the thesis exhibition. Uh -huh. So we didn't have experience with installation work and everything. And everybody was like making these like big plans to do installation stuff. Um, so it was, it was kind of, um, it, yeah, it was definitely disappointing. Um, but I kind of just, it made me look back at like the way I had of sharing my work because my work was about community and I wanted to share it with as many people as possible. So it kind of like, you know, I, I think at times we like sort of embrace and fear the internet, but it made me kind of like come back and embrace it a bit because I realized that I could, even if I couldn't install my work in the way that I wanted to, I was able to share it um, 
with more people probably than I would have if the, yeah. I like a physical solution. Yeah. How about you need to? I know you work with a lot of different materials also. So how was that shift for you? So for me, it was uh, a big change because I never expected when I came from India, uh, I never ex expected to have this kind of thesis exhibition because I don't know, like I will be here for one more or year or two more year. So I was expecting to have the huge uh, exhibition at MAM as Lisa Tung, director Lisa Tung has been curated this thesis exhibition for us. So I was having a like maximum hope uh, to get like, I didn't publish my work uh, until, until the, for the public reviewing uh, till last of the semester because I was just keep experimenting, experimenting with more than 150 experimentations in my studio in two years. So at last, like I was thinking, uh, I would have definitely a deep knowledge and the viewers uh, like dialogues on the work. And not for me, like for everyone is expecting like this, but at last time, like uh, the graduate office just selected our own work from a studio. They just click the pictures and just put it on the online exhibition. And we didn't like, we cannot decide our own work what we are going to choose and how it will look like. So for my 60 feet long painting installation, like they just took the two, three people help to hang it out and reshoot it and, uh, and just uh, display it in the Kunst Matrix uh, platform. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's a little bit different experience because during this pandemic, I am not able to produce my work and doing my work at home also because I'm sharing my apartment some more students. So as per our contract, I'm not able to make any work like, uh, like because the floor and the walls uh -huh. are going to dirty and this is the cause and condition. I didn't know earlier before pandemic, otherwise I couldn't select this house for me. Yeah. So this is yeah. the kind of situation. That's difficult. Um, did the content of any of your work change with COVID-19? So say you were thinking about one avenue and then all of a sudden when everything changed, maybe your approach or the actual like content of what you were thinking about, did that affect it at all for any of you? Um, knowing that you can't exhibit it physically in space, maybe it's sort of like, well, now I can, I don't know, open up all these different avenues of thinking or are all of you sort of like still on the same, same road of like, I'm just committed to see this through. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it has been changed so far. I'm the first time using at home the watercolor. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So for me, like, yeah, I am, I'm very like, I'm a person like the, uh, like few mls of hard color on my canvas, like the half pound and one pound and two pound colors on one canvas. Like this yeah. is kind of texture I was putting that at home. Watercolor can understand less. I'm learning, growing every day uh, uh, with my understand work. I'm still doing my work, not, as a physical, but with mentally and emptying a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's really interesting. Um, well, one of the other things too is sort of like, I think so many artists now are thinking about how does their art and their activism overlap or sort of um, if their art isn't necessarily based in activism, how can it support, you know what I mean, this sort of like activist approach? Because every there's so much happening in the world right now and it changes every 12 hours. So have you any of you thought about how art and activism merge for your work or thinking about how it can evolve into a more maybe activist role or thinking about public um, public issues and concerns right now? I, I think none of us could, um avoid thinking about it. I know that it's a constant thought, like, well, what am I doing as an artist? I should be doing more. And even the tidbits, I feel like my work, um, there's definitely avenue that home and home is and the structure of home. Um, when we start talking about housing, when we talk about space in general, is it marginalized? Is it an in-between space? Um, even the materials that I use and the processes that I employ, but but is th is that ever really enough? And then I feel like as the artist, we and then what is ours to talk about, or how should we be talking about that? Um, so I think I think it's tough to navigate some of that, and I think it's I know that it's a constant conversation in my mind, and I think that all of us want our work to be pertinent to the situation and the time that we're living in. So. Um, 
I think how to do it is like a daily question or yeah. what it should look like. I agree. Anybody else have any other thoughts about sort of the dumpster fire that is the world right now? And how to <laughs> exist in it? Oh, I, I agree with you, Mia. It's like con a constant question of my work is mostly about like, the psyche and like what's happening and like the more <laughs> the the more my like psyche is dismantled every day by like the world and the dumpster fire yeah i think about those things a lot and i think a lot about how like what my platform is and how can i use that to make things better or support things and how can I make my platform wider and bigger to, to support those things? I think about that, but then, yeah, again, the same thing, like what is mine to talk about and what, and what isn't? Yeah. It's a lot of that. Yeah. And to be brave enough to make the mistakes, you know, um, I know the saying is, but intentions pave the road, you know, that's not always the best way, but if staying quiet isn't, isn't, you know, silence is just participating in the problem. So, so really finding that bravery and, and voice. Yeah, I think like there are different aspects, like you were talking, you were asking before earlier about like what, how have our processes changed maybe? And something that I've been doing a lot more lately is, I mean, I do like, mo my process is really rooted in painting, and I, but I do a lot of, truly I'm an interdisciplinary artist and I've been doing like a lot of photography lately and so I've been trying to utilize that aspect of my like art making to be more like not really journalistic but I'm, I'm using it more as a way to just kind of record the world as it is right now yeah. um, protests and like everyone wearing masks and all of those types of things it's it's a, to me like documenting it is something that works well works better for me with photography um and then the painting is still just very much all in here <laughs> yeah well they're two very very different like process approaches where photography you can be much more immediate so you can witness something document it distribute it within 20 minutes versus a painting is a much more labor intensive and i don't know slow process yeah yeah I just really like the word you use, documented, because that's something I've been thinking a lot about in quarantine, is I've been doing mostly self-portraits, but really examining maybe my own process that improved, maybe uh, toxic in some way. It's just really, I did a self-portrait about every week, so throughout the time of the quarantine, I could look back and even see a lot of things that I hadn't noticed at the time, and that's a way of expressing things that maybe we can't even put into words. So I think photography and painting are kind of interestingly parallel there in that way, so I think we're definitely, even if it's not always immediately connected to activism it's always going to be there in some in some form so. yeah um well julian your video on the website is a really interesting sort of because it's your own voice and it's your own sort of self-portraiture um which is a really sort of like i think sort of what you're saying right of like we're i think in these sort of times we really become more aware of like our own bodies and how we fit into this very complex system. So um, I feel like that video work is really different than your graphics work, but they all probably support each other. Like those skills probably support each other in interesting ways. So um, do you feel like you're an interdisciplinary artist too, Julian? Um, yeah, for sure. And it's funny that um, that project, it it came from a lot of different pieces, right? Like doing those audio recordings, um, experimenting with different substances, um, the video recordings and putting that all together. Um, and at the beginning of the semester, it was like all of these big ideas that I had that I thought might branch out into a bunch of different projects or at least a really big project. Um, and something that uh, sort of being in this time taught me was to just sort of like simplify things and like if things just make sense putting them together then just do it because it ended up being a one minute video of like eight months of content um 
So I think, and, and that is a lesson I've been trying to teach myself before any of this anyway. Um, so I think it's, it's really helpful. It's been a really helpful time to sort of just like take a step back and, and um, like some other folks were saying, like be vulnerable and just like put yourself out there and, and like it's okay to make mistakes. Yeah. It is hard because I feel like school is such a high pressure thing too, where you really don't want to be the person who like makes a mistake, but you sort of have to if you want to keep progressing. Like I'm sure we've all been uh, torn apart in a critique once or twice and that sort of like feeling afterwards is just like pure defeat. But, um, but at least that feels a little safer. I feel like outside of the school bubble, we with social media and people hiding behind screens too, we live in such a call out culture yeah. that that mistake can go viral and be cut and distorted when really your intention was was to voice something good and to maybe be an ally um so 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 it does take a sense of bravery yeah. within the institution of a school and but particularly in our larger society i think yeah like there's one thing to be humiliated in a class of eight people and then you leave yeah. and kind of yeah. is, um sort of making work that exists digitally or i don't know on a larger scale where people can cyber bully you or I don't know misconstrue things um is this something where now that you're sort of everyone that you've sort of been forced into like thinking digitally is this something that maybe is becoming a part of your practice like Carly you said you were like painting with photoshop kind of like is that something you're like oh this is actually working and I like this or are you all ready to just like be back to more of a traditional exhibit I don't know Maybe I'm right. No, I, I like um because there's so many pertaining to this. <laughs> I mean when I was when I was a lot younger, I was really into like painting and Photoshop and doing digital art. And then the older I've gotten, the more I'm like really, really analog and doing things that are extremely like physical, tactile, like you know, building my own stretcher bars or like wood panels and like everything is touched my hands like every part of the process so it's really difficult but I but there is something about like um putting things together visually digitally like I've gotten really into InDesign and it, I don't know what it does it like satisfies my like left brain or something I'm just like I love InDesign right now I'm just like give me some things to apply to my CV it's beautiful like so that's like the one thing that I can think. I, I have a question for you, Julian, actually. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself um, exhibiting your work physically? I know you talked about being excited about being able to do that installation process. Do you have like plans or like ideas for actually doing that in the physical space? Um, well, I've been submitting my work to some gallery spaces and I, I actually just recently submitted to a gallery that is trying to do um, a physical exhibition, but still in a social distance way. So I was thinking about that. I was like, wow, this, it, it was just video work, but I was like, wow, this would be the first time that it'd be seen like on a monitor and stuff. Um, but yeah, something that I, um, I have some other like physical pieces and I really have to think about, um, unfortunately we didn't get our studio space back. Um, we kind of got it extended throughout the summer if the buildings were gonna be open, but they're not gonna be open anymore. I'm actually gonna go clean out my studio space uh, tomorrow, which is really mm -hmm. sad. Um, but yeah, I, I think um, I, I need to sort of become now more adaptable and like think about how and reimagine how I could install those works because they're definitely something I want to see um, in a physical space and have people interacting them with them in a physical space eventually when it's safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Has are any of, of your are any of you thinking about sort of the role of social media in a new way too, or sort of feeling like, um, I don't know, because if we're all locked at home, I feel like we have our, our phone in our hands maybe more than we would like like to, but are you thinking about how you distribute your work or sort of reach out to viewers and audiences differently? Like video, like, I'm not sure if your video work is on like Instagram and things like that, where it can be sort of easily accessible or, or any of you thinking about sort of this role of technology in a new way in your own processes? That was I like a this, part yeah. five, sorry. <laughs> it's, okay. it's okay. So I find this is very supporting. Like uh, before that, I was not very active on social media like a few months back. And now, I mean, it's very helpful because you can understand 
um, the comment and the one-to-one -one discussion after the social media if my friend and uh, the Indian friends or here new friends are going to take the participation and discussion so it's helpful for me otherwise like uh, uh, if we are having a show uh, it, at gallery 263 so we are not having an actual audience to listen to discuss to have our you know extended growth on the topic so I mean it's helpful personally for me uh, to more active on the social media yes yeah and I've seen some because I follow I think almost everyone in social media some of you are hard to find but I feel like everyone's so supportive of each other like I'll see someone post something everyone's like great job that looks awesome it's <laughs> just so fun to see it also it's like people are I don't know you have each other's backs versus sort of like I don't know <laughs> Feeling I think I think that part is like so much more even more important right now because I feel like that's what our cohorts um, do in person and if we had in person exhibitions we would get to meet each other and support each other yeah. and I think as we were talking a little bit um, before Doug like that, that in person part is really missing just your interaction with people even if you would just be and be present with them without speaking there's something about like what whether it's a chemical exchange or whatever it is that um, I'm feeling really strongly as far as the social media, I've been riding a little bit of a roller coaster with it. I feel back in March, April, maybe beginning of May, it was like every day I felt like I had posts and I was putting stuff out and now I'm like, it's getting loud. And then I needed just kind of a minute from it. So, so it's a little bit of a roller coaster. Like I think everything else has been these past few months. Totally. Anybody else have any social media? feelings i've kind of always been pretty active on social media with my work um i've i've always felt like it was a really important for me to like reach out and i end up getting a lot of commissions on Insta using instagram specifically um it's like the visual platform is helpful for me and i always try to keep my website updated and stuff like that so it hasn't really changed um in fact i feel like maybe if anything, it's been like a slightly quieter just because I haven't been able to be quite as prolific as I normally am. I, I was always like posting process videos and like all sorts of things like that. And so with everything slowing down a little bit, it's been, it's been less of that. Yeah. It's a tricky thing because I think it's uh, right now, especially thinking about Black Lives Matter and the protests, it's sort of like, how do we make space for other people's content while also sort of trying to, I don't know, we all have to sell a thing here or there to like eat food. So it's like, how do we keep thinking about the balance of how we exist and how we exist uh, not only on a localized scale of like we're art school students, but also like on this larger scale. Um, so it, it is tricky because it's not, uh, this is definitely uncharted territories for everybody. So we're all trying to just navigate and sort of work together to figure things out. Um, one of the last questions I had for everybody, which I'm, I'm sort of really curious about this, is sort of how, because you're all working in Boston. So Boston sort of has this history of like not always being the most welcoming city. Or um, So I'm just curious if, if you're, anyone's planning on leaving Boston or sort of how they feel that the Boston experience was for them as a student. I know, Julian, you said you're from Massachusetts, so you're sort of more in tune with the area. So I'm not sure if you have a positive or negative experience. I, I think I'll let others answer that first. <laughs> Is there anything else on to answer? Um, I'm actually leaving tomorrow to go to California for a little bit, but not not long term. I, I don't know. I'm going to visit family and stuff. And I... Um, in most of my adult life, I've lived in San Diego, San Francisco, and Los Angeles. And I think Boston to me as, as an artist felt way more welcoming than San Diego. San Diego's art scene is very like, it's very small. I mean, there are some, some cool things happening there, but it's not quite as like appreciated as here in Boston. Everybody that I meet is like into art and like people who, people, even people who say, oh, I don't know anything about art, like have museum memberships. And it's always felt very like part of the culture here, um, more so than most places I've ever lived. So it felt supportive in that way. Um, demographically and all of that is a whole other story we don't have to get into, but like, <laughs> yeah. Interesting, what about Nitu? You said you're from India, correct? 
Yes. So how did, was it for you coming from India to the United States and sort of how that, um, I don't know, how that affected your work and how you sort of see yourself in the city of Boston? So for me, experience in Boston was so nice and it's still very nice because I have met so many wonderful people as an artist community because here, I mean, the the common people, like a, like a people do respect the art. But in India, there is a something different. Like if you're an artist, so definitely you will have to think about that. And for me, it was a big, big thing because my previous background for the science, I did my first master's in biotechnology. This is my second master's. Okay. And yeah, and I did, I was just doing research on blood cancer and I was uh, engaged myself with total research kind of stuff. When I came into the art, and in India, it was not welcoming. You understand that if you are from the different background and you are trying to take the different, you are trying to change your different, totally different background in which you are not have a certain thing, uh, earning the money, sorry to say. And, and it's, it's a big thing, I mean, for the artists uh, in India. I'm not sure about here. I'm still trying to still explore the things in last two years. So, I mean, uh, as an education, I just got so much... Uh, research point, discussion, investigation, and topic discussion. I took the class in the MIT also. So for me, personally, with the artist group, it, it, it is so, so nice experience. And I'm thankful to Mazart and, and uh, USA and Boston, definitely Boston. And I'm, uh, I'm just uh, having a first show with you. I mean, it's a first show officially after my graduation with you. So um, I'm very thankful because I got really, very good experience uh, from this show. And uh, the second, um, I don't know after December where I am going to uh, have my destination. I'm, I'm not sure in the pandemic time I will leave for India or I will be uh, stay more over here. It's, it will depend on our job. As an international student, it's a little bit tricky uh, nowadays to get the job and uh, to have the, this kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad that you had a great experience. That makes me so happy. Yeah, um, me too. Yeah. I've heard so many people who had bad experiences, so it's great <laughs> to hear a good one. Um, you know, how about you? Are you from the area originally? Sorry? Sorry, me? Yeah, are you, where, are you from the Boston area or no? Um, I am from the East Coast. I'm originally outside of Philadelphia is kind of my native stomping ground. So, um, Boston isn't quite as good as Philly. There are a lot of cities, I would say. I do appreciate the intellect of the people. That is nice, as well as their art knowledge. People are very in interested in education, so that's good. I do not appreciate the cost of housing, so I, too, will probably, um, after this particular year, year, at least be moving out of the city. Um, but I do like um, the New England area. I do like the Boston area, and I've had a great experience here as well. I found it I found it really welcoming. I think part of it was finding communities outside of of the school as well, whether it was different um, LGBTQ communities, um, different like sport communities. There's a great um, motorcycle club that's here in Boston as well. So having some different avenues was certainly helpful. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Uh, Mariah, are you from the area or where are you from originally? I'm actually from the, mid the Midwest. So I'm from Colorado. Um, oh, okay. And so it's much different here. The very few shows I had when I was still living in Colorado, my art was pretty misunderstood. People just kind of thought it was weird and like, <laughs> so definitely moving to Boston, I've found a lot more support for the kind of art that I make. And I've found that there's like, there's value in my voice and I'm not just always screaming into the nothingness. <laughs> definitely had kind of maybe a, like a picture picturesque view of Boston for a while. I haven't lived here that long, but it's like the longer I live here, I'm slowly kind of realizing some really eh, messed up things about the city I would have never even noticed um, or had thought about prior to moving here. But I totally think it's there's way more opportunity for artists, even though things are a little bit messy sometimes. Like there's definitely, we're trying to make a change and we're trying to move into a better direction. So it's it's pretty exciting being in the area here right now. Yeah. I don't know if I'll stay forever, but at least for a little bit. Yeah, forever is hard to commit to. <laughs> yeah. 
a little bit. <laughs> and then Julian, are you staying in the area, you think, or? Uh, I don't think so. So uh, just because I've been here for so long, uh, my plan was to try somewhere else. That's why I wanted to hear all your answers first. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, no, I mean, I had experience, um, even actually from moving from the area that I lived in Massachusetts into Boston, um, has given me a lot more opportunities. Um, I've been able to find uh, intersecting communities of like um, queer people, South Asian people like myself, and um, who are also ar all artists, um, which is really valuable. Um, but yeah, again, that's only speaking from my own experiences. I think Boston has a lot of work to do in terms of like expanding um, accessibility in the artist community. Um, but I, I've, I've had a wonderful time here though. And um, I yeah. am kind of, yeah, I want to explore like artist um, communities in other cities. I'm, I'm really interested in that. So I think I'll be, I'll be leaving for a little bit. Yeah, it's a, there's a big world out there. <laughs> yeah. um, that's so great. I'm excited that so many people have positive feedback. Cause like I said, sometimes <laughs> there's people who've really had bad rough times in Boston. So um, was there anything else that anybody wanted to bring up or talk about that maybe we didn't cover or we touched on quickly? Okay. Um, I'm just very excited that all of you were able to really produce so much interesting, thoughtful, compelling work during this really, really hard time. I mean, I think the stakes are already very high as a student uh, as an art student and then it's sort of like now you're also in the mix of this very stressful anxious time so i think you should all be really proud of yourselves and sort of like give yourself that <laughs> allowance to not work for a couple months on it something or just like binge watch tv for a bit because like you deserve it mm -hmm. um so thank you all for sort of jumping on zoom with me